Hi Trombones! If you got here from the other video, I want to take this time to review putting together our instrument, creating the correct playing embouchure, making the first sound, and, and doing some warm-ups too. So let's get our trombone case. It's heavy, so they're going to rest it on the floor. We're not going to try and put it on a chair or on our lap or anything like that. If it's on the floor already, it can't fall to the floor, and so we're much safer. So we're going to lay it flat on the floor, and then the first piece that we're going to pull from our trombone case is our slide, and we'll notice our slide on the upper end has a longer tenon and a shorter one. The longer one is where we're going to connect our bell section, so we're going to rest that right between our feet facing us, and we're going to hold it in our right hand. With our left hand, we're going to reach into the case and get the bell section out of the case. And remember, we've got the slide with the long tenon facing us, and with our left hand, we're going to hold the bell, and we're going to connect those two together. If you do it that way, you can't get it wrong. If you put the slide with the upper tenon pointing out, or you hold the bell in the wrong hand, it's going to be all backwards and, and, and wrong. So you want to make sure the first thing is first, take that long part, face it right to you between your knees, take the bell, point it down with the, with the connector over here, and we're going to place them together with the slide in the right hand, the bell in the left hand. And then once they're together and they're seated correctly, we're going to go ahead and turn that screw. And that's going to lock those two sections together. The last part is getting our mouthpiece out of the case and we take our mouthpiece and we put it into the mouthpiece shank over here into the lead pipe and we're going to take just our thumb and first finger on the mouthpiece and we're just going to drop it in there gently and give it just a little turn. We're not going to crank it open like a faucet, okay? We're not going to grind it in there just with two fingers and that pressure fit is more than sufficient to hold it in there. Okay, when the two pieces of the slide uh, and the bell are, are, are locked together, they want to create a right angle from here to here. This is our right angle here. We don't want the, the trombone to be open real wide like this or really close so that, the, so that the bell and the slide touch. They should create a nice perfect right angle. So if you need to loosen up on that screw to adjust that angle, go ahead and do that now and then tighten back up on it. Okay. When we're holding the trombone, our left thumb goes around that casing, the, the slide bracing I mean, and our first index finger comes up on the mouthpiece and the rest of the three fingers curl in between, get a nice grip. This is the balance of the trombone, this is how we hold it and balance it. We don't want any weight resting on this hand for the slide because it's got to move nice and quick. Our other hand, our right hand, operates the slide. It's just our thumb and our first and second finger giving a nice grip down at the bottom. We don't want to use all four fingers and a thumb to grab onto it for dear life because that is going to create muscle tension and we're not going to be able to move the slide quickly. So we want to make sure that we have a nice easy grip on the slide just with these two fingers and thumb. When we're not using the slide we can go ahead and lock it with the slide lock and I always like to take that extra pinky and wrap it around the slide bracing there to hold it steady. Okay, so that is how we're holding our instrument, and that's how we are manipulating the slide. Okay, but for now, we're just going to take our mouthpiece and lay the rest of the instrument in the case, and we're going to talk about trombone embouchure. Okay, this is how we're going to form our mouth to create the sound on the instrument. The first thing I like to tell students to do is to think of their favorite food. When I think of my favorite food, my lips rest Mm, gently together. The corners kind of come back because I smile because, well, I like food. And my favorite food, which are those Entenmann's chocolate covered donuts. Oh, they just make me go, mmm. And I smile and I give that mmm sound and the corners go back and that puts my lips into the correct playing position for trombone embouchure. Okay? My lips don't go forward because this is not the correct embouchure for playing. And I don't think of chocolate covered donuts and have my lips go, mmm, like this. They go back, almost like this smile, pulls on the corners. And if I do that, mmm, think of my favorite food, and I bring my mouthpiece up, 
I want to rest my mouthpiece directly in the middle of my two lips, side to side and up and down. It should be right in the middle. Feel right where that sets in there. And with the corners back, if I pinch those corners and I don't inflate the cheeks, because that's not the right way to play, as I blow air through the opening in my lips while I maintain that mmm shape inside my mouthpiece, this is what's going to happen. It's going to create a buzzing sound as my two lips vibrate to each other. If I do that inside of the mouthpiece, I get a nice controlled buzz. I won't get a buzz that sounds like that if my lips are pushing forward or my cheeks are inflating with air. Neither of those will work. We've got to make sure these cheek muscles and the corner of our mouth muscles are tight enough to where they control the lips and cheeks from inflating and the lips from pushing out. So if I do that into my mouthpiece, oh, I get a great big buzz. And that's how we're going to produce the sound on our instrument. Before I even put the mouthpiece into the trombone, let's do some simple buzzing exercises. So let's buzz for eight beats. So we'll take in a, a great big trombone player's breath and we'll buzz on that mouthpiece. We'll count in our head for eight beats and we'll move our back away from the back of the chair so that our body can expand in all directions as we take a breath. We want to keep our upper body straight and our shoulders relaxed. We're not going to use our shoulders when we take a breath, we're going to relax them and we'll take that great big breath and buzz for eight beats. So count with me. I'll count you off and then count in your head as you buzz with me. Mouthpiece is up. Breathe in. Ready and go. Oh. Did you make it for eight beats? I hope you did. If you didn't, it's really easy to fix. Just make sure that you take more air in before you start to play. Sometimes students don't take in enough air and so they're going to run out of air halfway between that buzz or halfway through the buzz. So make sure you take in enough air at the beginning to carry you all the way through. Let's do that one more time. Eight beats on that buzz. Instruments up, corners back and tight, cheeks are not inflated and buzzing through the center. Breathe deep. Here we go. Eight beats. Ready and go. Now, the important thing to remember while we are buzzing and while we're creating sound is we always want to start and end every buzz or every note with our tongue. And the way we do that is to think of the word two. And if you say the word two with me, go ahead, ready? Two. You'll notice that your tongue starts at the top of your back teeth. Let's try that again. Your tongue starts at the back of your top teeth and it pulls away as you release the air to say the word two. Let's try it three times in a row. Two, two, two. Do you hear how you get that t -t sound? That's the exact same motion that you need to do inside of your mouth when you buzz on your mouthpiece. Let's do three two buzzes on the mouthpiece. So we'll create three separate buzzes in a row with using our tongue to create that t -t beginning. Ready? We'll do three of them. Ready? <laughs> Want to try that again? Remember, two, two is how we create that sound. Let's do three of them together. Ready and go. <laughs> And whenever we play our instrument, once we put it together, we want to grab that mouthpiece and it's great to warm up by holding buzzes for a long time and then also practicing buzzing while using our two exercise. That is a great way to warm up. Later on, we'll talk about some lip slur exercises and some lip stretching exercises to create the, the uh, pitches moving up and down, and we'll use the tongue faster. We'll do all those types of exercises in a later video. But for now, make sure we've got that buzz. So once we're set, we can take the mouthpiece. Remember, first, first finger and thumb, slide it in, a little slight twist. 
And now let's play our very first note that we play in the book, which is the note D. The note D is on slide position four, which is, if you look at the bell, the edge of our slide is even with the bell. That's slide position four. That will produce the note D. When we hold it, two fingers and a thumb, and we're going to take in air, and we're gonna start with the tongue, and we're just gonna hold that D. Ready? Let's do the same thing that we did before with just the buzzing. We're gonna use the tongue three times in a row. Two, two, two. Are you ready? And by using the tongue, we create a very clean beginning to the note, and we also don't waste a lot of air trying to get our lips to vibrate. We start with a buildup of air and blast the air through the instrument good and strong so that the lips start vibrating right away without having to blow air to get them to vibrate. If I don't use the tongue, it sounds like this. <laughs> not a very pleasing sound. So strive for the first way, not the second way. When you're set, you can go on to the next video and we'll start on number two in the book and we'll go all the way through to 11 and I will see you there. Thanks.